talking about the economy, uh, my colleague Joseph Akable has been speaking to uh, former finance minister, Dr. Dufour, on recent happenings. Listen. So we had to speak to Dr. Kwabna Dufour. He is someone who has quite a deep understanding of the Ghanaian economy. And he's been around, managed it, played various key roles, including being at uh, the regulator at a point in time. And so we'll be tapping into his perspectives on what he makes of the current challenges and the way forward. Uh, Doc, thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us. Thank you for coming to. I mean, Doc, um, if you are asked to, I mean, describe the current state of the Ghanaian economy from your own understanding, how will you describe it? Thank you, the Ghanaian economy. Is in crisis as a result of the situation in the public finances of our nation. Over the years, precisely over the past 10 years, we have been accumulating debt, huge debt. The figures released by the Bank of Ghana indicate that uh, the central government debt stands at about 575 billion Ghana cities. When you add the state-owned enterprise debts, it means our public debt is over 600 million, billion cities. The reason why we are in crisis is that for the same period as a nation we have not been able to mobilize domestic financial resources. Resources from tax and non-tax revenue. In our public finances, domestic resource mobilization has no substitute. You don't pay interest on this. When we're able to grow your domestic revenue, you are safeguarding your national sovereignty because you're not going to be involved in reckless borrowing, especially foreign borrowing, which may endanger your national sovereignty. Right now, we have that problem. We are begging for debt forgiveness. You understand? I mean, we'll come a bit more on the debt forgiveness, but I mean, just a couple of years ago, especially the COVID period, we even recorded positive growth. I mean, the economy not too long ago was doing quite well. Uh, I mean, beyond the failure to marshal domestic revenue, uh, do you think there's something that we did wrong directly or what we could have done differently that could have averted where we find ourselves now, the crisis you talk about? No, you see, having accumulated foreign debt of $15 billion from the European market, within eight years, between 2013-2021. It's not only the size of the debt, but the period, eight years, it's a short period for a nation to accumulate such a huge debt. You better point, the servicing of this foreign debt in hard currency has been a problem. Because we are not exporting goods and services, which earn as enough revenue in hard currency to be able to service this particular huge foreign debt. What happened was that we were borrowing from the same market to pay the interest on this huge foreign debt. And when we were asked to stop We had a huge problem. And don't forget, the history of world debt crisis, the history indicates that it starts from foreign debt, always not domestic debt. So the 15 billion within eight years has been a huge challenge for Ghana. I mean, what value would you put on the influence of external factors. I mean, we, we've heard a refrain about Russia, Ukraine. I mean, what value would you place on that? There's no doubt that uh, such a, a big war will affect all nations dealing with Ukraine. But if you look at 
other African countries, they were able to manage the situation. You understand? Especially by, fi by 15 of the African states registered single digit inflation over the same period when I was always around 50%. So there might, must be a problem domestically. Okay? Yeah. I mean, if you're asked to I mean, place values on it in terms of maybe 50 50, 60 40, I mean, the chunk of the challenge will it be domestic or external? You look at the drivers of inflation in Ghana. About 10 drivers are all food related. You understand? We are unable to produce enough rice. <laughs> Basic food, Fru even fruits. Hmm? Uh, they are not Ukraine <laughs> war related. I don't believe that. We are not producing enough, period. As a nation, we are not working hard enough. We are not producing hard enough. Food production should not be a problem for us. You understand? Yeah. I mean, in the midst of all these challenges, um, government took the view that um, going to seek support from the IMF uh, was what they wanted to do. I mean, even though quite earlier they had indicated clearly that uh, we're not going to go back to the IMF. I mean, you have been at the finance ministry before, assuming you were there at this point in time when you realized that, okay, this is how the books look. We are indebted. We can't, our balance of payment doesn't look too good. I mean, and cabinets, you're in cabinet and they ask for advice. I mean, would the IMF had been um, an option you, had, you would have suggested that government should go in for? We have been before, but when we were there, we focused on domestic resource mobilization. We cut down government expenditure. During our time, for example, we reduced the ministries, the MDAs, from 27 to 23. So reduction or cut in government expenditure was a major you know, policy. You must always balance your revenue with expenditure. When you are unable to pay your bills, we say that you have debt and <laughs> stability. You will be forced to seek support from outside. But when you are able to pay your bills, able to balance your revenue with expenditure, you will not go out looking for support. The situation we are in, we have to look for support. Because over the years, we were not able to do that. We were not living within our means, you understand? It's not how much you earn, but how you are able to manage the income you make. We as a nation, we appear to be living not within our means, but above. That's a problem. I mean, as at November, our debt totaling was about $43.9 billion. And uh, one of the things we are government is trying to do with the IMF program is to attempt to restructure these debts. And so far, I mean, a chunk of the focus has been on the domestic debt restructuring. I mean, government has been criticized, especially because of the old, the new bonds they try to trade for the old ones and push the maturity data back. back. What's, I mean, what's your reading of that particular transaction? They, see, there was a contract between the government and individuals who went in for the bond. In the midst, if we want to change the contract, you should start negotiations with the people. You understand? For example, I have an interest in an insurance company. There's a contract between the insurance, comp insurance company and the clients. You have to insure your car for an insurance company that when it's an accident, they should be able to restore you, give enough to cover. The way it is, a government, because of difficulty, is giving them new bond and not paying enough interest. When there's a problem with you, because your car is involved in an accident, 
what will happen between you and the insurance company? They may say, we don't have money to pay, but you have contract with them, not the government. What would you do if you find yourself in this situation? So there should have been lots of consultations, for discussions, for the two parties, government and the stakeholders. The quantum of the domestic debt was a little over 100 billion. Eventually, when the government closed the process, they said that it had come down yeah. a bit uh, because of trading in some of the bonds, among others. I mean, if you were to be at the helm of affairs targeting which bonds to restructure and which ones not to, I mean, topical amongst them has been the individual bondholders and the pensioner bondholders. Would those two have been something that you would have, I mean, in simple terms, put your hands over and try to convince them in these talks that you had just now? You see, we seem to be talking about the debt treatment. I don't believe that's a problem for prisoners. Our problem goes beyond debt treatment. You understand? How did we get there in the first place? So we, the managers of the economy, I say we because I've been there before. We, the <laughs> managers of the economy, we have created a problem. And those who had nothing to do with the, with the problem have been asked to solve the problem. Is that fair? I mean, government says in simple terms, um, I owe you, but I can't meet the commitments. Something must, something must give. No, they could have done it in a different way. Call all of us. There has been a problem with the management of the economy. We borrow so much money to manage the economy. Something has gone wrong. What can we do together? You understand? I mean, those, there should have been a lot of consultations, discussions about the problem so that we buy in. They should ask for our buying into the problem. What can you do to help us? Not take it or leave it. I mean, was the attempt to I mean, deal with the pensioner bondholders, for instance, do you think that was a viable, a viable move? I mean, currently we have been told that they wanted total exemption. Eventually, just a couple of days ago, the finance minister has now written to them after the agitations and everything to say that, okay, I've granted the exemption now, but I mean, it's still voluntary. Those who want to participate have already participated and those who didn't have also um, stayed away from it. I mean, w w was the whole exercise good in itself? Was it a good move? Because there are some who hold a view that uh, those are very vulnerable groups that government should not have touched at all, especially because there are people who have worked many years and that is what they are basically leaving on the coupons. Yeah. If we had cut down the size of government, we would have made some savings there. Instead of touching the, the pensioners' bonds, of course, not much, you understand? A cut in the size of government would have made enough savings to cover what we are looking for from the pensioners. You don't think so? I mean, that, that would have brought down, uh, in terms of our, our expenditure, that would have brought it down. E exactly. Mm. Bring down the expenditure, make some savings, so that you don't touch these, these old people whose uh, pensions is so dear to them. We had a workshop years ago of the pension of those who had worked in the public sector. You better believe about 53% of the people don't earn more than 500 cities a month. The pensioners issue is a very sad issue that must be looked at. Those who have worked in the public sector and our pension. Not more than, sorry, about 53% of them don't earn more than 500 
Ghana cities about two years ago when they did this exercise. So it's very pathetic dealing with pensioners, especially those who have worked so hard in the public sector. I mean, for about seven days, I mean, we, we covered it extensively. You had the, I mean, I'm sure some of them were people that you even worked in, with in government. Uh, Dr. Edward Anentry was at uh, the Security and Exchange Commission. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the former Chief Justice. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you, you saw those visuals of the I mean, being at your former office. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you saw those visuals, what, what was running through your mind? It felt sad. Very sad. We also have information, data on how much they take home every month from their pension. Very small. Very few take 2,000 cities a month. Very few of them. And some of them work for 35 years, or maybe almost 40 years for the nation. So if we have to cut down government expenditure to save them, I will do that. I mean, for now, I mean, we did a period of uh, attempting to get some of them to sign on to the bonds. Some of the bonds matured. But government said because it was still doing the processes of subscribing people and the invitation was still on, uh, they've decided now that on February 21, the matured ones that they couldn't pay, yeah. they will now be redeeming those ones. I mean, uh, would you say that at least the point that we've reached now, no matter how difficult it was for us to get there, uh, is satisfactory as far as you are concerned? Yeah, government has shown commitment that they will pay when they mature. I pray that we'll be able to make enough money by cutting down the size of government, right? so that we'll make some savings, bring in some cash to pay them during maturity. I like the way uh, the chairman of the finance committee put up the case, Kukwatin. I agree with him. The domestic debt exchange by itself will not be able to restore the challenges to the economy will not recover or bring about any recovery unless we look at the whole system. For example, cutting down the size of government, making sure that the rate of inflation goes down. When we have inflation hovering around 50% now, the purchasing power of individuals and companies are going down, you know that. We have to also, much that with aggressive domestic resource mobilization. The main objective of the domestic debt exchange was to reduce the interest burden on the country's debt, which means we must all aim at making some savings in the system. Government must begin to think of making savings. The investors, businesses must begin to think about that. And be sure to watch a playback of that interaction with Dr. Dufour on all of our social media platforms.